here in North America, particularly the United States and in Canada, we tend to lean towards doing. That's not a good thing or a bad thing. We just lean towards doing. Something's going on, okay, we try to fix it. This is uncomfortable, okay, we're gonna do something about it. All right, I don't like where I'm here. Okay, well, let me take action. And I, I meditate most boardings. You know, a couple of my good friends have been Buddhist monks. Like, so I'm familiar with more of the Eastern style of it. And it's interesting to kind of see them clash that discussion and to understand, wait, we don't always have to take action. And remember from the, from the, the previous section of the show, there are three parts based on, again, the transitions model, shout out to the bridges, the transition model, where there is, when we're going through a transition, there's an ending, there's a neutral zone, that messy middle, and then there's a beginning. That neutral zone is key. As I talked about earlier, it's similar to winter time before the, the spring blossoms bloom. You know, I'm thinking of Japan and the cherry blossoms. You know, there's, but it's about to get cold in Japan. <laughs> I've been in there where it's been snow in Tokyo. It gets really cold in Japan if you haven't been there before. So it's like Michigan. So they have their cold seasons and then it comes up. That neutral zone is that cold season. It's the, you know, um, it's the chrysalis period between the, the centipede and the butterfly where things are mushy and gooey and confusing. Boundaries that were there before don't exist, but the new boundaries aren't established yet. I can talk about it all day. I talk about it more in actually my newsletter. You can go to joindamon.me and read my newsletter right now. The link is below. And I talked about it in my uh, weekly newsletter today. Free newsletter comes out every Wednesday morning. But I talk about it extensively. That messy middle is where things start to take shape, but they're below the surface. It reminds me of a fantastic um, quote from Les Brown, the, the famed, the famed, um, famed speaker that was a couple generations older than me. Hope you're doing well, Les. But I love his work. And he talks about the bamboo tree. And evidently for the first five years of the bamboo tree, once you plant it, you have to water it every single day and nothing shows up at all. But you have to water it every single day. If you don't water it every single day, it's gonna die. But under the surface, or on the surface, nothing's happening. So you water every single day, what's that, like uh, 1,500 days or something? <laughs> every single day, three to five years, I believe he said. And then one day, it just sprouts up. And suddenly it's this magnificent, you've seen a bamboo tree. Again, speaking of Eastern Asia, you've seen a bamboo tree, and they're just beautiful and big, massive, taller than me, et cetera, et cetera. That's what the neutral period is like. That's why we have to hang out in that in-between time. And there are five disses, D-I-S, that we experience during the neutral period. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna get this directly from the book because it's fantastic. I wanna make sure that I don't, I, don't, uh, I don't miss one of them. amazing silence i come from a radio background so <laughs> so silence is kind of weird i like silence in my real life but on the air it's like oh my gosh it's silence so there's there's a series of disses that come with it and some of it actually spills into the ending as well so this is the ending I mean, there's three stages ending neutral zone beginning this is going from the ending to the neutral zone the first one there's five disses, get my fingers right, there's five disses. The first dis is disengagement. You're gonna be feeling disengaged from your daily life or your routine. It might be stuff's going on at work, you feel disengaged from work. It could be stuff's going on at home, you feel disengaged. Like whatever the case may be. There's stuff going on in a relationship, you feel disengaged. That's part of the ending process. That's part of the, part of the, the challenge with it. The next one, in no particular order, is dismantling. In other words, you're taking apart, again, those certain boundaries or setups or systems that you had in place before. They don't matter anymore. They don't make any sense anymore. If you're ending something and or in this neutral zone, then you have to dismantle a little bit. Otherwise, it's not really an ending or a new beginning, right? If you, you know, if you end up doing the same, you know, the second verse, same as the first, like what's the point of that? 
a certain amount of dismantling that happens. Again, the conversation, crucial conversations, the book link below would help a lot with that. I like this one. Number three, it's a disidentification. In other words, you don't identify with the same thing. And I talked about that a little bit earlier where if you identify with this particular social group, you know, this group of friends, and then you move, are you still associated with those friends? Now, of course, today we have modern technology and I have friends literally all around the world at this point. I'm so grateful for it. And we can catch up on all the different platforms. But still, that's not the same as us, you know, sharing a hug and then getting a meal down the street. So there's a certain amount of this identification that happens in that transition where it's like, what is my identity? What is Damon? What do I represent? Who am I? That's part of the confusion. Number four is disenchantment. Disenchantment is basically saying, I believe this was true, but now this is ending or I'm in this neutral zone, I'm realizing it wasn't true at all or it's not true anymore. I kind of like, there is no Santa Claus. And there's a bit of a letdown with it and maybe even a sadness, maybe even a depression, depending on the heaviness of it. And the last one, number five, is disorientation. <laughs> Excuse me, disorientation. As far as not knowing which way is up, which makes perfect sense. Right? Because if your beliefs are based on this and those beliefs change, then it's like, well, what do I believe in anymore? Like I don't get in anymore. What do I believe in? So in other words, those are the five, those are the five disses. And it's disengagement, dismantling, disidentif disidentification, <laughs> disenchantment, and disorientation. Those are five stages. Kind of reminds me of Elizabeth Kubler Ross and the five stages of grief. I'm sorry, five stages of death, which also can be um, related to the five stages of grief, as my Freudian slip just said. If we're in those positions and we feel any or all of those things, what I'm trying to say is that that's completely natural and normal. That's okay. That's part of the process. And allowing us to feel those things is really, really important. Because it basically says, all right, if we're going to feel these different things and we give ourselves permission to do so, then we can allow ourselves to go through that process without the guilt or shame. I was thinking about this earlier today when I was getting ready for this episode where for me personally and for a lot of people that I coach, and I think I've coached between four and 500 people at this point, and there's a commonality there where when we have the most challenges, it's not usually based on the change. Change is hard, but it's not usually based on the change. It's based on the transition. Remember, change is external. Transition has to do with what's going on inside of you. And the challenge still with that transition, it's not usually with the emotions that are around it. The feeling of loss, uh, grief, anger, frustration, disappointment, et cetera, et cetera. I've had, a, I've had a lot of change and transition issues. So if there was, there's this great emotional wheel that a therapist had recommended years ago that I actually bought from my family that, um, that I have on a pillowcase, but you ever see that wheel? It's like a color wheel, you know what I mean? Like with swatches and stuff, but each color represents an emotion. So if you're feeling overwhelmed by emotions, you can point to them. You know, so I got it for my kids when they were um, a few years younger. Worked out really well. They don't need it as much anymore. Thankfully, they're kind of work able to articulate their emotions more. But it even helps with us adults. And <laughs> right, the year that I've had, I felt like I had the wheel of fortune. Where I was feeling all kinds of stuff with all the changes that have happened in my life. The challenge, though, usually isn't with again the change, which is external, but with the transition, the internal stuff. But then on a second layer of that, with the transitions. It's not usually that wheel of fortune of emotions that we feel. It's our feelings that are connected to those emotions. I feel sad about this change, but I, I feel like I shouldn't feel sad. So I'm not going to allow myself to feel sad. And that, that last part, I'm not going to allow myself to feel that emotion. That's where our pain is. Very Buddhist philosophy. It's not new, you know, I'm not, <laughs> this isn't breaking news for David, <laughs> but it's that basic and basic psychology one-on-one, -on -one. but it's that friction. It's our unwillingness 
to go through those transitions. That's our, our willingness to admit that we have those feelings because we feel embarrassed or shame. Again, Brene Brown for beginners is right below. You can click the link. Real talk. We end up getting caught up in those things. So not only are we dealing with the change, which is external, and not only are we dealing with the transitions as far as what feelings we're feeling, we we'll also have to deal with our feelings about feeling those feelings. And that part right there, our feelings about feeling those feelings, that's where the guilt, the shame, and other things come from. A lot of the coaching I do, we end up working through that at least as much as possible. Because it's not usually about the feelings itself. It's about how we feel towards those feelings. And somewhere along the way, or maybe an inner dialogue, or maybe because of the situation, we feel embarrassed or feel shame or guilt for having those feelings. So we refuse to address them. And, you know, like Albert Einstein and other people have said in the past, energy can't be destroyed. It just goes somewhere else. So, you know, you know the body keeps score. <laughs> the emotions come out in a different way. Physically, mentally, emotionally, in some situation where we end up overreacting. But it's really about this other thing. So all that stuff is connected. But it's really about us finding those things. And a lot of that fighting, frankly, happens in the neutral zone because we don't have anything in particular to do. As I talk about my book, Career Remix, and it's funny, they had a very similar analogy in the book Transitions. And I had never read the book before, so it's funny. We were thinking the same way. But it's almost like leaving shore for a distant island. And then there's a certain point where you can't see the island in front of you, but then it's too far or it's barely legible or visible as far as the shore that you left. So you, some people like spend the extra energy to go back to where they went, they came from, but then eventually they're gonna have to make that journey. And then sometimes you just need to be bobbing in the middle, continue swimming, stay afloat, Do doggy paddle if you have to, just stay afloat. And then before you know it, the shore is right in front of you. Just like the bamboo tree, you know, shout out to Les Brown, that bamboo tree that just pops up at the last minute. Suddenly it's in front of you. And, and that's, that's a beautiful thing, but you have to trust the process. And on those waves of emotions, sorry for the tortured analogy, but for those waves of emotions, you gotta just kind of roll with it. And the more you're able to roll with it, the better off you'll be. A good book to talk about this and to navigate that middle area is called The Creativity Leap by Dr. Natalie Nixon. Shout out to you, Natalie, hope you're doing wonderful. Fantastic book, one of my favorite books of a couple of years ago. I shout it out many times if you've watched the channel for a while. Dr. Nixon talks about two basic processes that allow us to be creative. And creativity, in my opinion, is life. So it allows us to live our life. It's wonder and rigor. Wonder is, wow, I'd like us to, what would it be like if, if I lived on Mars one day? Is that going to happen in my lifetime? I wonder what it would be like if I was the kind of parent where creativity was above everything and schoolwork and all that, that's great, but it was just, you know, my kids come home and there's a new art project for them to do. Totally surprised. Just go for it. What would it be like if I travel regularly and I learned to become a DJ and I just explored different areas and, and had fun and made people dance. And that's wonder. I wonder if. And that's wonder. Rigor is, okay, so if I'm going to have a new art project for my kids every day, then I better go to the art supply store. I better get a calendar to go ahead and for each each day of the week, go ahead and write it down. It's going to require some planning. I better put some money aside because art can get really freaking expensive. So how am I going to do that? The rigor is saying, how am I going to implement it? The wonder is imagination. What if? Rigor is, okay, brass tacks, how is it going to work? This book breaks down. Neither one is right. Now, now if you've been watching for a little while from the beginning of the show, I was talking about there being a writer and there being an elephant, as talked about in a fantastic book, Switch, by Dan and Chip Heath, about change. This parallels that. The rider, the person steering, is the rigor. How are we going to implement this? How's it going to work? 
the elephant, the person, the thing, not person, the thing, <laughs> elephant's not a person, the thing being written is the wonder. What am I passionate about? Where do I want to go? This is where I'm being drawn to. Oh my gosh, there's an animal over there. Oh, it's not going to be an animal. It's okay. All right, great. I think I want to wander this way. You know, I'm really hungry. Just very much like free spirit, as we used to say back in the day. That's your wonder and your rigor. Implementing and using this book, I think, would be super helpful if you're in that neutral zone, if you're in that messy middle between an ending and a beginning. Because you can look at the possibilities, and then as you, which is wonder, and then as you go deeper until you can look into the rigor and be like, okay, well, how do I implement this? And maybe the rigor part, frankly, doesn't come too much later. Maybe you're just in the wonder part where you're like, you know what? These boundaries that I have before don't exist anymore. These assumptions that I made don't, don't apply anymore. What exactly can I do now that I wasn't able to do before? And based on that, how can I show up differently? How can I show up better? That's a different vibe. That's the wonder. Sometimes we have changes, and oftentimes we have changes that are out of our control or not the way that we would have planned it or the way we would have liked. I look at the neutral zone, as talked about in transitions, as this kind of middle where it's like everything is possible. It's not turning out the way that you planned it, obviously, but everything's possible. So if everything's possible, then let's just swim in that for a little while. And it's like, oh, we're getting a little bit closer to shore. Well, how can we make this a reality? How practical is this? Dr. Nixon does an excellent job on this. Again, love her book. I, I read it probably about once a year. Fantastic book. Definitely worth checking out. And I appreciate, I, I love supporting her work because she, she does fantastic work outside of this as well. Related to this, one of my other favorite people, Seth Godin. Hope you're doing great. On the dip and when you should quit. One of my earliest Bring Your Work TV episodes, I think it was like episode 50 or something. <laughs> right, again, less, less gray hair in the beard. Man, Seth Godin has been a mentor of mine. I have all his books. He has a new book coming out this fall called This is Strategy. I will talk about it as soon as I get an early copy of it. He's a legend. You know, I got five of his books right, right behind me. This episode is about the dip which might be my favorite book of his. Super short book, it's like 45 minutes long. Um, if you click on this episode, I think a link to the book is, 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 on the, is on the description of the episode. It's about when to quit and when to stick with it. I will not get into that because I will make it, I will make this a three hour program. I could talk about, me talking about the dip will be longer than the 45 minute audio book. I can guarantee you that I could talk about it all day. But basically there's a, there's a, a a formula you could use to say, okay, should I stick with this or should I let this go? And this doesn't have to do anything with sunk costs. And sunk costs have to do with what you've already invested into it. That's it's kind of that's kind of the Trojan horse of this, is he's saying sunk costs shouldn't be calculated. Because if it's sunk costs, but it's the wrong path, who cares how much you invest in it already? <laughs> As they say in that investments, what's to call them? Don't throw good money after bad money. That's what that means. You already lost money in it. Okay. The next thing you can do is stop. <laughs> do something else. He talks about that. I talk about um, in a much more concise version that I'm doing right now. It's like a six, seven minute video. It's very, very short. But it's concise talking about the dip and we should quit. And I break down some of the, some of the three, uh, three best things that he has going on with that. So when do you feel like that you've been in the in-between space? Are you in the in-between space now? Are you in a place where you've ended something or something has changed? Let me be clear about it. Are you in a position where something's changed, but that new thing hasn't sprouted yet? Are you dealing with that kind of fear that the new thing might not sprout, which is totally natural? And how are you dealing with that fear? Again, I've had a lot of changes here and way more transition. I can relate to that. So how are you processing that? Um, or any of the tools or the analogies that I've used today, have you started to practice those um, before for the program today? Hop into the comments. I'd love to love to get your take and maybe maybe some type of support that me or the other viewers can can give you. 
Again, my name is Damon Brown. I'm an entrepreneur coach. I promise to know how to spell it. I'm an entrepreneurial coach helping side out to the solopreneurs, otherwise non traditional entrepreneurs. You're watching Bring Your Words TV Wednesdays at 1 11 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, Vegas time. You can subscribe for free. Again, we're approaching 400 episodes. Go back, enjoy the catalog. I love hanging out with y'all. And the newest book is the complete Bring Your Words collection, 27th book. Eight books are in here. I no one's been playing when I said the collection. Check it out. It's a really good price too. And it's published through Bring Your Worth Publishing. So you'll be supporting the channel as well as my little old publishing company. Oh, if you happen to miss it, you recently did an episode on how to begin freelance writing if you want to become a writer yourself. Coffee break. Cheers to y'all. And shout out to short, short form, shortform.com slash Damon, D-A-M-O-N, sponsor of this episode. You can go through there and learn more about the ultimate book reader's companion. Get a free trial and 20% off courtesy of short form in this episode. <laughs>